the information that I'm about to give right now, this process that I go through every single time I talk to a motivated seller on the phone, by organizing it in these five simple steps, has not only helped me get way more deals, but it's going to help you now get a lot more deals. And it's my five steps to a close. You guys want to know all five steps? Yes. All right. It's the art of getting a motivated seller to say? Yes. yes. Step number one is building rapport through active listening. Now, let's talk about building rapport through active listening. We kind of talked about this the other day. It's the art form that uh, Larissa said is say their name, right? And then repeat back what they just said to you and expand on that, right? So active listening. If they tell me, you know what, Cody, I'm uh, like, like in the situation that I was in where they, the lady said, Cody, my mother and father, uh, my dad's having health problems and my mother and father are using this as a vacation home and they own it in free and clear, but I don't think my mom's gonna ever be coming back if something happens to my dad. And I would say, let's say her name was uh, Sarah. I'd say, so Sarah, what you're telling me is, right? Pretty simple statement. What you're telling me is, is your mother and father aren't gonna be using their secondary home any longer, especially if your father has health problems and they don't want the burden of having another house outside of their home state that they have to manage and take care of. That's what I would say back to them. All right, so building rapport through active listening. It takes practice to do active listening. It's not something that naturally happens. You have to be conscious. So a lot of times when a motivated seller calls in our hotline, I always say, um, who am I speaking with? All right, just give me two seconds to get to a quiet place or is this uh, the best phone number to call you right back at? Let me get to a quiet place and I'll call you here in a minute. And then I keep gathering my thoughts, right? I don't just like nail it right out the gate when I'm distracted doing work or doing something and all of a sudden trying to wing it just because the motivated seller called, right? It's okay to step back, take a breath, c collect your thoughts, okay? I, I handed out two things to you guys, right? A lead intake form and a small script that I wrote. Now, this script is from the angle of you sent them a direct mail piece, right? And now that they are calling back in. So um, in a second, we're going to do an exercise where we actually start role playing with each other, right? That's the best form of practice is just get up and start doing it. And uh, try to use your active listening when we're going through this process because as you go back and forth, even though we have a script, expand on it. Maybe for the first time you go through the exercise, you just read the script back and forth, right? But maybe the second time, the person playing, the motivated seller throws in a curveball, right? Kind of switch it up a little bit. Realizing that the script is a guideline, right? It's not a script where you have to like read word for word. It's, it's a tool that's gonna help you guys not, not feel uncomfortable getting the conversation started. But at the end of the day, all you need to do in the beginning part of every conversation is just listen. Don't talk. If you ask a question, go and zip it, right? Which is uncomfortable to do sometimes. But get them to talk. Ask engaging questions and get them to talk. So here's some questions, some, here's some examples. What's happening in your life to make you want to sell your house? What's happening in your life to make you want to sell your house? That's a good question, right? That'll get the conversation going. What's happening in your life to make you want to sell your house? Another question is, what challenges are you having with selling your house? The goal with my whole first probably five or ten minutes of the conversation is to uncover the seller's why. The real why. Why are you wanting to sell? Now, there's no magic statement that uncovers the real why, and there probably is no hidden agenda of the motivated seller in most cases where they don't want to tell you their why, but normally it's not the first thing they tell you, right? Normally there's a deeper thing. I, I want to move out of state, okay? That's not the real reason. The real reason is they want to move out of state to live with their mother who is getting ill. Now I've identified the why. I can, I can zero in on that. I make that note. As soon as they say it and I think I have their why, I write it down. So what's happening in your life to make you want to sell your house? And what challenges are you having with selling your house? Step number two, we've 
identified their why. Once we have their why, we're now, now able to move to step two, which is agitating the seller's pain. Okay, very important. People are motivated by pain. There's pain and pleasure, right? A lot of investors make the mistake by saying, wouldn't it feel good to sell your house quickly? We're not motivated by that. When do you go to the dentist? When your mouth is all jacked up, right? That's when you go to the dentist. You know, when you get sick, you finally get your butt up and go and get an x-ray or whatever, whatever you do when you get sick. But you gotta agitate the pain. So some questions with agitating the pain is saying something simple like, what's gonna happen six months from now if you don't sell your house to me today? What's gonna happen six months from now if you don't sell your house to me today? Or this one's always great, especially if they're married. What's your wife gonna think about you when you get further into debt, right? Now you can say that in a nice way. You don't have to say it with so much aggression. But you could say something like, you know, how's the rest of your family gonna feel if you guys keep going further into debt and you're not able to solve this problem quickly? We're just agitating the pain. But we don't know what the pain truly is until we've identified their why. So step number three is force the seller into the present. I like to do this, and I want you guys to all do this with me right now. I want you to come here in the moment with me and just focus up here real fast. Focus up here. You need to bring the seller into the present. See, I just brought you guys into the present, right? I just said, focus on me right now. Take a deep breath and just get with me here in this moment. So you can say that to the seller, you know, by saying questions like, what are you gonna do right now in order to change your current situation? And you could tell them, hey, listen, I just, don't worry about all your other housing problems or anything like that. Let's just focus on this for one second. Come here with me real quick and just listen to, listen to what I'm gonna ask you. What are you gonna do in order to change your current, or your, 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 change your current situation? How are you gonna solve your housing problem right now? The goal is having the seller have that aha moment, right? But you can't have an aha moment if you're still stuck back here on the problem. They need to come to the conclusion that they're making this decision to sell. So what are you gonna do in order to change your current situation and what are you gonna do to sell, solve your housing problem right now? Because I believe that you're a pretty smart person and that you're somebody that doesn't want to be in this current situation. And I think that together, we're both able to put our heads together and solve your housing problem, right? You're bringing them, now, now you're kind of including yourself with them and saying, look, together we could probably solve this problem. Step number four, get the seller to say yes. Now we're transitioning. We got them into the present. They're now able to make a decision. They're feeling like they're starting to gain some control in the conversation that you're having with them. Now it's time to get them to say yes. How many yeses make a sale? No, seven. Seven yeses. You just gotta keep them saying yes. Do you wanna sell your house with less hassles than a traditional sale? But yeah. Do you wanna put this time in your life behind you and just move on with a fresh start? Yes, There's no, it's not like they can say no to that. Right? Just come up with questions that you can get them saying yes. How many times this weekend did I get you to say yes? A lot of times, right? Did I take you guys through my five steps of a close? This weekend? Everybody's like, dang it! He got me! Right? But that's what you have to do, build rapport. Agitate the pain. Bring him into the present. Get him to say yes. And number five, now that you have them saying yes to you, now you're going to tell them how they're going to do business with you. If you ask somebody, now would you like to sell your house to me today? You're asking them a question, right? But if you say, now what I'm gonna need you to do right now is sign the purchase and sale agreement in front of you so we can start to do some business together, okay? 
I have this statement up here. If you want to have a hassle-free sale with me and my company, then you're going to need to sign that purchase and sale agreement sitting in front of you or that I just emailed you so we can do some business together. It's a simple statement. Modify it how you want, but make a direct command. Now it's time to tell them what they need to do. Up to this point, whatever's caused them to get to this position has been because of bad choice after bad choice. Some illogical choices have been made, emotional choices. They're going to need you to just tell them what they need to do to solve their problem. You can't jump right to step number five. Otherwise, it would be really rude, and there's no rapport there, and they're going to feel like you're bullying them around. But if you've done your job and you've gone through these five steps, by the time you get to step number five, they're going to feel comfortable with you saying, listen, I'm, we both know what needs to happen right now. I just emailed you a purchase and sale agreement, or I'm going to see you at 10 o'clock, and I'm going to bring my purchase and sale agreement. What you need to do is be able to make a quick decision after I make you an offer if this is going to be a right fit for you and your family. Right? I'm already telling them what, what needs to happen. And then when I meet them, I'm going to say, look, your, your house needs a lot of work. Right? It's like gleaming in gold. Your house needs a lot of work. All right? <laughs> this thing's going to be a lot of work for me. But I know that you know, I think I'm going to be able to create a win-win situation where the seller can benefit okay so what I want to do right now is I want to do some some role-playing exercises you guys want to have some fun with this yeah. can we can we get with uh, one of our neighbors and kind of go through these five steps to a close you guys have them written down you guys have a script for the first time through it just one pick the motivated seller one person be the investor go back and for, forth reading the script on the second time and then switch partners then go back and throw some curveballs in it and see how they react. See if you can start to build rapport. At the end of the day, the script is, hey, listen up real quick. The script is there to have you fill out the lead intake form, right? Your goal is to fill out the lead intake form. We're in acquisition mode right now. We're trying to acquire information. We're running our circumstance analysis and our due diligence. But we can't do our due diligence without the circumstance analysis. So these five steps to a close is getting that information from them. So once you go through it and you feel really comfortable with the script, ditch the script, right? Take some of these questions and just integrate them into the conversation and just kind of role play back and forth. And hopefully you can get the majority of the information. There's certain information we need to get. Beds, bath, square footage, all this stuff. But at the end of the day, does most sellers know everything? No. What if you tell me, hey, listen up, guys. What if you tell me, um, what if I asked you this question? Um, what do, you do you have a current mortgage on your property? And they say yes. And I say, okay, what, do you, what are your current monthly payments? Most, sell most motivated sellers are going to tell me, I don't know. What's your current interest rate? I don't know. What would be my response to that? Well, more than we need to find out, I'm going to give them direct command. What am I going to tell them to do? I'm going to need you to go, go right now and pull, I'll put, you can put me on hold for two seconds, go pull out your mortgage statement and come back to the phone. I'll wait here. Right? I don't know where it is. That's fine, but before we're going to ever be able to do any business together, I'm going to need you to get that document, okay? So part of, your, part of the stuff that I'm going to need in order to make a decision is for you to find that. But in the role-playing situation, when you get to the part about the mortgage, Role play that through, you know, some, you know, you know, make up some interest rates, make up some other stuff. Because what I'm doing when I'm collecting this information is I'm formulating in my head what I'm going to do with this deal based on the seller's situation and my current financial status and my short-term goals, right? I'm trying to put it in one of those four boxes. And if I can wholesale it out, maybe you guys do a wholesaling. Hey, let's do a wholesaling script run through where uh, you have a lot of equity in your property and just come from that angle, kind of make it difficult for me to talk. And then you guys just go back and forth, all right? The more times you guys practice this, the more comfortable you're going to become. So we're going to take about, I don't know, what, 20, 25 minutes, go through this. Is that enough time? I think that's plenty of time. So let's do this for 25 minutes. Who here bought a house? <laughs> all right, one guy in the back. Oh, you guys bought houses. Well, she's got a house. She's got, house. See, she's got see enough money big. to do it now. All right, oh, so... By going through that exercise, did it give you guys a little bit more perspective and confidence to possibly do this again in real life? Oh, yeah. Yeah? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. After doing it a few times, is it fairly simple to just do, right? Yeah. Going through these five steps, kind of keep them in, in your head. 
print these five steps out and put it next to your phone, put it next to your computer, and just kind of read through them, all right? Everybody has to start somewhere. Talking on the phone's not easy, but it can be if you practice, all right? So that was the whole purpose of that exercise, just get you guys outside your comfort zone, get you guys role playing a little bit. That's uh, one of the biggest benefits to coming into an event like this is you guys get to get pushed outside your, your normal boundaries and do things that you wouldn't normally do. So I'm really proud of you for taking action on that exercise. And um, we're done with the five steps of a close exercise.